In 2008, Vadim Ozog and Elena Kataraga form the Moldavian metalcore quintet Infected Rain. Since their debut release Asylum in 2011, they have toured with such metal heavyweights as Behemoth, Obituary, and even Motley Crue, increasing their already loyal and rabid fan base. In 2022, the band releases Ectasis, their fifth and most aggressive offering to date. In an exclusive interview with Lena Scissorhands, 99WNRR's metal correspondent Aaron Presti sits down with Lena to discuss the new release, the upcoming worldwide tour, and more. This is a 99WNRR and Launchpad Live interview with Lena Scissorhands from Infected Rain. Hey, I am Lena from Infected Rain, and you're listening to 99WNRR. Ladies and gentlemen, Lena Scissorhands from the band Infected Rain. Can you hear me all right? Yes. How about you? I'm great. How about how are you? I'm doing great. Getting some loving from my dog right here. <laughs> He's absolutely adorable. So I just want to jump right into this, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Do your thing. Absolutely. Uh, first off, congratulations on the new release. Uh, so talk to me what the songwriting process was for this album compared to the others. Well, it was slightly different because of the time we live in, actually. Uh, I am thankful for this slight difference, though, because it made me learn so much more. Uh, Before I jump into telling you how this whole thing went, I want to tell you that um, I live in the United States for six years, which is super far from where the whole entire band is and where we all started the band. And we are pretty used to work remotely. So it wasn't that we had to figure out everything from scratch, everything like, you know, how to do it, how to communicate, how to compose and stuff like that. But the one thing I had to learn is to actually, uh, well, at the time, uh, the traveling was uh, banned and uh, we I couldn't go to Moldova to record like I normally do. And um, I had to do it here. So I did, um, you know, compose remotely and work on ideas remotely um, before, but I would always travel to go to the studio and uh, finalize the idea, put the skeleton structure of the song there, uh, show it to my boys first, talk together, work on it together, polish it together, and then go in a studio and, you know, kill it. Uh, now I had to actually do all this by myself until we knew what the future holds and when or if I'm even going to be able to travel. So um, I had to uh, acquire equipment and a special program that uh, is used in a recording studio. I had to uh, learn it. I had to practice it. And then I had to roll my sleeve and try to do it at home. So with the love and support of my family, my friends, and specifically the close fans that uh, support on Patreon, I was able to invest money and time in a little vocal booth, uh, uh, which helped me a lot. So that's how I started working uh, on the melody for Egdesis. Um Yeah, I, it was challenging because it, it's something completely new I never did before. Also, it was challenging because I had to um, be my own critic. I had to uh, understand which takes are good and which are bad by myself, which usually is the job of your producer. You are in a completely different room. You hear him in your headphones, or sometimes you see him on the screen, depending on the studio, and you guys communicate. And he's like, okay, I need more takes of this, try more, try this different or that, you know, and and you communicate, you work together. Here, I had to do it by myself completely, which was challenging because I, when it comes to vocals, especially, I'm very hard on myself. (laughs) So, um, but I learned to, I guess, feel it more. Um, And it's it's a good learning, I, I think, everybody should try and learn that if they don't yet. I never had to before, so that's why I never did. So 
uh, it was a difficult thing to do, but a very uh, innovative and a very um, uh, fun thing to do. And I'm happy I was in a way uh, pressured to learn this, you know, because of the time we live in. So that is the only difference. Eventually the travel band was taken down and I was able to travel and actually track all these ideas uh, with our actual um, producer. We work with him from the album number one. We know him very well. We are friends already, you know, like all these years of working together. Um, so, um, yeah, I finished the recording of the vocals uh, in Moldova with my band and uh, um, and uh, uh, producer, but uh, I prepared everything and I, I um, uh, post produced, let's say, um, everything prior to this, which made um, made it way easier in the studio. I was going through the songs very fast because I already knew them, the, the, all the pieces were established in my head, they were approved by my band already, like things like that, you know? So that's actually the only difference um, when it comes to this album in comparison with the others. It sounds like you guys really kind of started from scratch, but you definitely made it work. Uh, I want to talk about uh, your three singles on the album. Uh, in your most recent music video, Fighter, that you posted on YouTube, uh, the lyrics constantly remind us that we're fighting something. From a lyricist's perspective, what exactly are we fighting? What was the message behind that song? It wasn't really the, the um, uh, I guess the subliminal meaning was that, but the actual main meaning was that we should fight, that we should fight for our dreams. We should fight for our goals in life, for our happiness, for our well-being, for you know everything. We should never give up, no matter what. Even when the life gives us sour and um, you know um, rotten things, even when life gives us bad experience, bad people, um, or whatever, we should never give up and still you know, roll our sleeves and we got this, we can go through this. Specifically this song to be um, a little bit more open and to go like more into detail is actually something I never wrote before. And I'm actually talking about women, women in general, like fighters, women that have so much on those shoulders and they still um, pursue their dream their career path, although they are mothers, they are maybe sisters or like they have other things to do. Um, for the first time ever, I actually was inspired by uh, women and their, um, their like, um, in a way, stubbornness <laughs> when it comes to like, getting something done you know and as growing up my mom was always a role model to me uh, because um, we had very difficult upbring upbringing and she was alone um, and there's three of us I'm the oldest so I remember all the struggle I I was helping her a lot um, growing up with my sisters and then later on I could see how much um, she would um, leave all the, um, all the pleasure of life behind because there is so much that needs to be done and she would not leave her and enjoy her life at all, you know? Um, so then later on other friends, uh, in the music industry or, or not necessarily in the music industry, other friends, females showed me as well, a lot of like, um, you know, fighting for their own um, well-being and their own goals in life and dreams. And so, I don't know, I just, I, I was very inspired uh, by this uh, newer friend that I was making. She's actually also from Moldova and she's an actual fighter and uh, uh, a wrestler and she's a mom and I talking with her more and more made me understand that, hey, maybe we don't really give enough credit to certain like warriors, certain like, you know, 
female warriors. And I, trust me, it, coming from a person like me where I always try to advocate that it shouldn't be a difference where when it comes to female and male, we are all human beings, we all have emotions, we all have ups and downs. It shouldn't be all that big, you know, I'm not, I can't call myself being um, like a feminist or anything like that, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not, no. However, I, um, I'm in a band with boys and, and growing up, I, my friends were majority men and I felt very comfortable with it. I never felt like any type of like, oh, you're a woman, you shouldn't do this. If, I, if that ever was in my life, I was like, I'll show you I can. And that's it, you know? So for, that's why I never really uh, wrote about this specific um, message. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, the, the theme of the song works very well in, in today's society and era. Um, and it also ties into, you know, the, the boxing scenes that I saw in the music video, which were shot absolutely wonderfully. Thank you. Uh, we the actually had professional, um, professional fighters. Both girls were professional fighters from my country, from Moldova. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That is they actually play. really cool. Uh, the music videos to all three singles, Realm of Chaos, Fighter, and, and Postmortem Part 1, all show uh, themes of restraint and isolation from the ropes tied to the band members in, uh, I believe it was Fighter, uh, to the cocoon in Postmortem Part 1, and finally the pitch black spacing surrounding the band in the realm of chaos. What was all that inspired by? Was it personal experience or was it a collective statement by the band? Um, no, we don't have a collective statement <clears throat> in this album, just like we never did with prior albums. Um, every single album touches different uh, themes. Uh, I will be honest, Postmortem Part 1 and The Realm of Chaos have similar uh, ideas. It's, it's more like a global type of t theme. Um, however, they are still very different. Um, now, all this darkness and restraint is, is mainly to show that um, unfortunately, this is what we encounter on our everyday life. And we see how people are not being themselves. People close doors and they, they are not being themselves. They are either playing some roles in this life, like at work, in the family, or in a relationship or with the friends. They are not being a sincere. They are not being themselves. Now, I don't want to generalize, but it's what happens, uh, unfortunately, specifically with our society nowadays. Uh, because of social media and all the uh, internet life uh, being so mm, predominating, you know, and people, uh, it feels like people tend to be someone else uh, because they think that's more acceptable or something like that, which, which is not true. You have to be yourself no matter what. Uh, obviously, uh, have um, um, a sense of uh, like, uh, you know, common sense and, and be nice. Don't be like, an, don't be an asshole, but be sincere, be yourself. If you don't like something nicely, speak about it, say that you don't have to do anything that goes against your beliefs or against your mood. If you don't feel it today, you don't feel it. And it's fine. We are not robots. We are human beings and everyone is unique in their own way. Right. So that's pretty much what we were trying to say through all this, like, uh, uh, metaphors in a way, um, with the cocoon especially, uh, that one is very powerful because we connected it to the name of the song, uh, the album as well, I'm sorry. Yeah. And uh, the whole music video for Postmortem Part One um, is actually very relevant to the album itself where um, is it, do is this real? Is this our reality or someone else's reality? Is this what we want or, or, or what someone else wants? Um, almost like bringing up some sort of a, uh, parallel down dimension or another, uh, another reality type of a thing. And with the cocoon being the main like monster or whatever in the music video and finally getting out of it is almost like uh, in a way, a metaphor for this unique time we live in and 
hoping for something better, for hoping for a something uh, positive and, and a life bursting out of all this depression that we are all dealing with lately, you know? Yeah, I, I totally understand. And that's, you know, another great message on top of, you know, the fighter lyricism and all that, that yeah. really sticks with today's society, especially uh, for younger people like me. But even it reaches out to the older audience that listen to you guys. So absolutely, it draws that deep connection. Um, since the beginning of the band, what were some of the things about the music industry that surprised you the most? Uh, and how did you address it? Like, how you guys were marketed, the creation of your music, working with studios, touring, social media, et cetera? That's a, a hard question for me to answer because we've been independent for 10 years and we were just figuring things out. We really didn't have a uh, plan or someone in this industry that is very, um, experience to tell us what to do for 10 entire years we were just figuring things out we were trying our best to just monitor what's happening in the music industry and what are the right uh moves to do and when, when you want to like um present a new song or a new album you know what are the right moves so the right moves would be okay every album should have a couple of music videos okay every album should have a couple of tours to support it you know things that like that we had to figure out by ourselves for the longest time now in the beginning of uh 2019 we signed with the label and napalm records um got on board and um, we still work a lot. We still do a lot by ourselves. Um, and um, however, it's supported and promoted by professional people that know what they are doing. Mm -hmm. So that would be probably the only big thing that we uh, kind of Mm, had to do or were told to do and I mean we all agree with that we just certain things were impossible to do as an independent band like certain tours were impossible to do because we need special paperwork special visas certain like radio stations wouldn't take uh unsigned bands or things like that you know like um even our interview uh, it happened be through Napalm. So, you know, like little things like that. Uh, we still had a lot of press, a lot of interviews, but n maybe not as much or maybe not with certain, you know, uh, certain people or certain uh, magazines or certain. So that is the only thing that I think, you know, really changed a lot drastically. Everything else we just had to figure out by yourselves and be like, hey, this new platform is out there. Maybe we can use it for the band or something. You know what I mean? Like just test, testing waters, see if we are comfortable with it, see if our fans like it. And if it's okay, then we will continue. If not, uh, then move on to the next one. You know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. That's, that's it. Um, speaking of Napalm Records, what does it mean to you and the band as a whole to be a part of such a legendary metal label like Napalm? Um, being signed with Napalm actually was a very interesting journey because they've been after us for years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they were probably the very first record label that uh, sent us an actual offer, which I'm talking years and years ago. I believe we were um we just released our second album or something like that and then um you know we ended up being spotted at some festivals and like so we constantly talked through emails we just didn't feel ready um at the time i don't know for some reason many reasons actually there are many reasons we were also afraid you know that someone will jump on the board and want to um change you or whatever, you know, that stuff like that, especially because in this industry, unfortunately, um, a lot of fans and a lot of press even tend to compare bands, which is super wrong. And we wanted to just be by ourselves, you know, for the long, as long as we can. And we thought we can do it for as long as we can. But obviously, sooner or later, we had more attention, more people, more uh, listeners, more viewers, everything more and more and more. And you're like, I can't do this anymore by myself. <laughs> so eventually, you know, other labels 
offered uh, to work with us and here and there, but uh, Napalm never gave up on us. And they always made sure that we understand that they love us the way we are. And they really always supported and they really, you know, I remember, especially with 86, when we released our third album, I remember having an email from them saying, this album is so great. We, <laughs> I wish we could promote it because you guys deserve way more attention than you, you have. So like when people tell you that, you're like, okay, you believe them and you, you, you see that it's genuine and they don't just try to have another band that they already have on the label or they don't just try to, you know, money is important. Of course, it's a job and it's a job for us just like it is for them. So obviously they are seeing potential and they are seeing that both them and us can make good money on this eventually, you know, because there's potential. Yeah. And just by b them being so genuine about it and so forward about it, and never giving up on us, not being sour that we, we I'm telling you, probably f on a fourth offer, we said yes. Four offers. Yeah, yeah. from the same lab label I'm talking. Right. We have yeah. other offers from other labels. But on the fourth probably offer, and so I'm, I'm actually insanely thankful for their patience and them being so insisting with us and not being like, these guys, I'm not going to deal with them anymore because, <laughs> hey, maybe I would I would be like that. I don't I mean, I have patience only for, with something, certain things, but not. <laughs> yeah, of course. So so all credit to the label, to the main, uh, you know, CEO of the of the uh, Thomas of the label and everybody else on board. Yeah. Thank you for not giving up on us, because actually with all its ups and downs is the bigger family. It's it's not easy. But it's next level. We all work together. We have one goal and they love what we do, which is super beautiful. Yeah. I, I mean, to me, it's an absolute dream come true to be associated with an album like that. I, I couldn't think of a better scenario for you guys. And it's been working out pretty well in you guys' favor. Um, I got two more questions here for you. Uh, a lot of bands in the genre have stated they don't like to use the words female fronted but yet there are other bands that embrace this what are your feelings about it that being said what are your thoughts on the new crop of bands being led by female performers i.e ginger spirit box stitched apart and so on um me personally i don't like labels in general so um and everybody in my band will support me here even when we are classified as a specific genre we are like oh, really are we that genre i don't I, I don't know maybe this song is but this other song is not you know yeah. so we just don't like labels in general we like to be free-spirited and be able to compose in any type of uh um, genre sounding and all that that being said i feel like metal uh, uh female fronted metal uh bands it's almost like a new label now and do i hate it no but do i love it not even a little bit so i i guess i try not to react to this it's not my favorite thing when people do that but i whatever you know i, I try not to dwell yeah. on that so uh yeah as i said i'm not um i'm neither um you know the one that will be like yeah i'm i'm, I'm you know super proud to be part of this new army of like yeah, it's cool to be there but 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 like it's a new thing i was i was there before even you know like the band is 13 years old there were fewer bands with female musicians in general not just vocalists you know right. even growing up i remember like only a couple of bands where girls were like being this badass you know, like I remember Cold Chamber with the bass player uh, girl. I remember Guano Apes, a band like that um, blew people's mind from band from Germany with this girl, like almost like harsher vocals and rapping. I remember Walls of Jericho growing up, Garbage, you know, all these bands. But uh, oh, and Kitties, you know, that's kind of it at the time. We didn't yeah. have too many, you know, especially in the harder um sounding industry um metal industry sorry yeah of course um but um so yeah i, I don't know i'm the wrong person to be asked that i i don't hate it but i don't love it either yeah fair like, enough. i think i just think 
if people could think outside of their of the box, it would be better in general, not just with music, but in general, stop putting labels on things, you know, do what feels good Do make art, uh, you know, it doesn't the labels in general, we have labels in like, okay, so if I love girls, I am th called this, but what if I like girls and boys, then I'm called this. So what if I like metal and I like pop? What am I called? What if I only eat this? Am I called this? It's like, you know, all, yeah. everything has a label. <laughs> it shouldn't necessarily be that way. I agree, 100%. Um, um, a lot of bands have their own opinion on how they approach the mm -hmm. female fronted type thing. Uh, yeah. Bands like over in the US, uh, Heart and um, let's say uh no, no doubt those kind of bands they don't really like to speak on it too much they just want to you know play their music be classified yeah. as that genre and go on about their life mm -hmm. um so the the term female fronted I, i'm happy that it doesn't really bother you guys that it, it it's either associated or not associated with you and it's a good mindset to have touring and all that and going throughout you know your music career uh, i got one more question for you here uh, talk to me about your YouTube channel, Bananas. Uh, 15K plus subscribers. It, it's super smart because I saw a few videos and, and I feel I felt closer to not just you as a singer and a band member, but to the whole band altogether. So can you speak on the growth and the evolution of the YouTube channel and why it started? Well, it started like a year prior to the pandemic. So sometimes in 2019, um, and I, I was told to do that by so many friends and, and, uh, by even fans constantly for years, I would hear people say, you should have your own YouTube channel. You have so much to say. You can share this. You can share that. <laughs> I'm curious how you do your hair. I'm curious to see videos of you make, doing your makeup. I'm curious about what you eat and this and that and that. But I was very afraid to be boring or not to have enough content. And when I s embraced that, and I also had um, another person jumping in and helping me out with the videos, uh, actual videos, I, I guess I gained a little bit of um, uh, bravery and I, I went for it. And yeah, sometimes I post very often, like a couple of videos per month. Sometimes when I'm super busy with the band, they are more rare. Uh, but yeah, I just try to put a lot of content in there uh, because unfortunately we, we just physically don't have time to invest too much into um, like videos about the band uh, when we tour all the time. So I feel like the band's YouTube channel was a little bit um, like left behind. So when that happened, because we, we didn't have enough time and uh, um, the guys that were doing the editing in my band, they're all band members, they just physically couldn't do it, just physically didn't have enough time. So then I decided to, you know, bring that to my YouTube channel. And yeah, I had so much love and support for it that I just kept going, you know, and um, yeah. Huge, huge amounts of success there. And, you know, 15,000 plus subscribers. That's, it's actually very impressive. Thank so, you. I, I, I didn't even know. See, I'm, I'm not even <laughs> paying attention to the number. Of I am just paying attention to, you know, uh, the comments and what people like uh, request sometimes. And if it's something I can relate to, then I'll be like, oh, uh, that's actually fun. I love doing this and people want it. I'll do it then. You know yeah. what I mean? Stuff like that. Um, the fan interaction is the most important, important part about it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I understand uh, the main reason also behind this uh, is also, I got to say, uh, it's very important to be yourself and to um, um, show people that you are just a human being that have bad habits, good habits that can do this or can do that. If you don't, I feel like all people will have is what social media uh, is gossiping about or what a certain um, journalist misinterpreted and wrote. That happens all the time to us, you know, especially if they have to transcript something. Um, it's It happens all the time that at least a question or two was understood wrong. And then now all the fans think this, you know, so 
um, that helps a lot. Like putting out their videos like that helps a lot for uh, closer fans, especially. So the ones that actually subscribe and, and follow you to understand your personality and, you know, understand the fact that, hey, you can be depressed as well as they can be depressed. You can have, you know, uh, weird taste in movies just like they can have that. It's fine. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that. Exactly. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. This was really amazing. Please take care of yourself and good luck on the new release. It's already out and actually with another music video for this. Beautiful stuff. I'll check it out right after this. Yep. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Take care of yourself. Bye.